Welcome to the video lesson for 7.2, Systems of Linear Equations in Two Variables. We're going to focus on a new process of elimination, and we're also going to talk about the three different types of solutions you can expect to get when you're solving. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're reviewing the steps of elimination here. We're going to go ahead and walk through them. To begin with, you want to make sure that you have coefficients for both x and or y that differ only by a sign. So if I have a positive 3x, then I would have maybe a negative 3x. Or if I had a negative 2y, I could then get a positive 2y. If we don't actually have that, what we can do is you can multiply all terms in one or both equations to make sure that your constants are, again, differing by just a sign. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and add the two equations to do the elimination process. And the reason we're doing this is to get one of our variables, either x or y, to go ahead and cancel out. And we can finish solving what we have left. After we've solved it, we know either what x or y equals. So we can go ahead and move on to back substitution. We can take whatever we got in step two, so whatever y equals or whatever x equals, and we can plug it back into the original equation to solve for the other variable. And then as always, our last step is to check our solution to make sure we're correct. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right, so for our first example, we have 5x plus 3y equals 9 and 2x minus 4y equals 14. And if we look at our x values, we have a positive 5 and a positive 2, so they're definitely not differing by only a sign. And then for your y values, you have a positive 3 and a negative 4. Again, not differing by a sign. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and focus on my y values because they're already different signs. They just don't have the exact opposite coefficients. And in order to make that happen, I'm going to take my first equation, and I'm going to multiply it by the coefficient for my second equation. So I'll take equation 1 and multiply it by a positive 4. And then I'm going to take equation 2 and multiply it by a positive 3. And when I'm done doing this, hopefully my y values will be exact opposites. When I've done that multiplication, we have 20x plus 12y is equal to 36. When you multiply your second equation, you end up getting 6x minus 12y is equal to 42. If you look at our y values now, we have a positive 12 and a negative 12, so they are in fact exact opposites. We can go ahead and add them together and get our y values to cancel. So when you do, you get 26x is equal to 78. And then if you divide both sides by 26, we end up getting x is equal to 3. Now that we know what x is, I can go ahead and take my x value and plug it into x for one of my original equations. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into my second equation here. And if we do that, we end up getting 6 minus 4y is equal to 14. If I subtract 6 on both sides, we get negative 4y is equal to 8. And then dividing by negative 4, we get y is equal to negative 2. So now that I have my two values, I could take them both and I can plug them into the first equation to verify that what I have is in fact correct. If I plug in a 3, then we get 15. And if I plug in a negative 2, we get minus 6. And the question is, does that equal 9? And when you simplify, we do get 9 equals 9. So I know for sure that my values of x equals 3 and y equals negative 2 are correct. Before we do more examples, we're going to talk about the interpretation of your solutions. So there's both the algebraic approach and the graphical approach. If we have exactly one solution, then algebraically, when you work through it, you're going to get something like x equals a number and also y equals a number. And important to note that number could, in fact, be 0. Graphically, if we had two equations and we graphed them, what we would see is our two equations would intersect at exactly one point, and at one point would be our solution. So again, algebraically, when we solve it, we get actual answers. And graphically, when we graph them, they intersect at exactly one point. For no solution, what we end up getting is something a little different. We get something like 0 equals to 3. And that is definitely not true. Since 0 does not equal 3, we don't have a solution. That would be the algebraic way. Graphically, what we would see is lines that are parallel. So I see two lines, and when I graph them, they're parallel, which means that they are, in fact, never going to intersect, so they do not have a solution. For infinitely many, if we solve it all the way down, you get 0 equals 0. And that tells me that these equations are always going to be the exact same. Graphically, if we graph a line, and then you graph the second line, your second line is actually going to be right on top of your first line. So they are, in fact, the same line, which is telling us, again, they have infinitely many solutions. So these are our three types of solutions. I was solving these equations to kind of figure out what our solutions actually mean. All right, so here we have our next example. We're going to go ahead and solve this one using elimination to get our solution. We can pick either x or y to, to kind of cancel out. Let's just say we want to get x to cancel out. So I need my two x values to be the opposites. The way I'm going to do that is I need to multiply both equations by something to end up making them opposites. And I can actually multiply just the top equation by positive 2 to turn it into a positive 4, which is the opposite of what I see for my second equation. So let's go ahead and do that. 
multiply my top equation by a positive 2. That gets me 4x minus 6y is equal to 6. And then my bottom equation doesn't need to change because I already have that negative 4. All right, when I go ahead and I add these together, my x's are going to cancel because they're opposites. And it turns out my y's are going to cancel, so I get 0 is equal to 12. Now we talked about this, 0 in fact does not equal 12. And since it doesn't equal, that means these lines are in fact parallel. And it means that they are never going to intersect, so your answer for this is going to be no solution. So once we've uh, gotten our solution, we've simplified our steps, we just need to make sure we can interpret what that means. And in this case, again, it means that we don't in fact have a solution. We could take it a step further and say no solution because the lines are in fact parallel if we wanted to, to make sure we're uh, correctly and accurately interpreting what these lines are. For our next equation here, again, we're going to solve this using elimination. I'm going to go ahead and get x to cancel out. In order to do that, I'm going to take my bottom equation and I'm going to multiply it by a negative 2 because, again, I want my x's to be opposites. So my top equation doesn't change. I have still 2x minus 3y is equal to 3. For my bottom equation, I'm now going to have negative 2x minus 4y is equal to negative 10. I'm going to go ahead and get my x's to cancel when I add these together. And when I add my y's together, I get negative 7y. And it's going to equal a negative 7. When I divide both sides by negative 7, we get y is equal to 1. So interpreting my solutions, because I have an actual value for my y, I'm assuming that I'm going to have an actual solution. And this would be a unique solution where the lines intersect exactly once. I'm going to go ahead and take that y value, and I'm going to plug it into my first equation. And if I do that, we get 2x minus 3 is equal to 3. I'm going to add 3 to both sides to get 2x is equal to 6, and then divide by 2, and we get x is equal to 3. OK, now I need to verify that my answer is, in fact, correct. So I'm going to take both of those and plug them into my second equation. And if we do, we get 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. And simplifying 5 is, in fact, equal to 5. So we definitely have a solution. And in this case, it's a unique solution because our lines intersect. All right, and for our last example here, we're also going to go ahead and solve this using elimination. I'm going to go ahead and get my y's to cancel out this time. So since I have a negative 3 and a positive 6, if I multiply my first equation by a positive 2, it'll turn it into a negative 6, so they will then be opposite. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So when I multiply this by a positive 2, we end up 4x minus 6y is equal to negative 6. And then for our second equation, it didn't change. We still have negative 4x plus 6y is equal to 6. I'm going to go ahead and add everything together. And when I add them all together, the x's cancel, the y's cancel, and our constants are going to cancel as well. So we end up getting 0 equals 0. And since 0 equals 0, that means that these lines are, in fact, the same line. And for our answer, there are infinitely many, which I'm going to go ahead and abbreviate by IMS, which again stands for infinitely many. And that is our solution because these lines are, in fact, the same line. All right, guys, that does it for the notes. Go ahead and get started on the homework, and good luck.